hello and welcome back to our second session of the night on our last day of the virtual weekend roadshow. Um, again, welcome to International Education Week and this is our last night. We're excited. We're talking about inter, uh, intensive English programs and community college tonight. And with us to talk about intensive English programs is Alex Chang from San Francisco State University. Thank you for joining us tonight and take it away, Alex. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you, everyone. Hello, my name is Alexander Chang. Um, greetings from San Francisco State University. Uh, I am the director of a Global Recruitment and Partnerships. So um, I usually do a lot of the business travel to um, uh, East Asia Pacific region, you know, recruiting student. So um, today's sessions, you know, I like to focus on um, the intensive English program and conditional admissions. And I'm going to share my slide with everybody. And um, so you can see, um, actually the topic I, I am going to focus on today is not just talking about intensive English program or conditional admission. I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about um, all the programs related to uh, intensive English program. So today's sessions, um, first I wanna give everybody an overview. Um, today's session, we're going to break down to uh, different segments. And first I would like to talk about, of course, the uh, intensive English program by itself, followed by the conditional admission. And then there are several other programs and some of the major features about the English program that I want to talk about. So um, let's start with the, the, the English you know, sessions. So obviously many universities, many colleges in the United States, they have, the, many of them have their own intensive English program. I'm using San Francisco State's you know, intensive English program as an example here, at San Francisco State, this program is actually called English Pro for Academic Preparation Program, and which is also known as the Intensive English Program. Obviously, when students start thinking about coming to the US to attend an Intensive English Program, um, there, there are probably multiple purposes. I think the, the main purpose is they wanna improve their English proficiency. And that's really ob obviously the number one priority. And, but in addition to the, um, the English you know, courses, you know, most of the program, they will offer academic skills training. So actually, I think that a big reason that many universities are setting up intensive English program is to help students who need the English you know, proficiency you know, to get into the university degree program. So a lot of the curriculum that's being set up at, in, at the uh, Intensive English program is not just to teach you about conversational English, it's more focusing on uh, reading, writing, you know, listening and speaking. It's all comprehensive training in terms of uh, gaining the academic skills needed to go into whether you're interested in an undergraduate degree program or a graduate de degree program, or as Vincent indicated earlier, some of you may be just you know, wanting to go into the intensive English program for professional purpose. You want to learn how to read and write and speak confidently so that when you go back to your workplace, you can communicate with people. Now, pretty much all the intensive English programs set up in the US, okay? Um, they all have different pathway to allow students not only to study English in the program, but also gain access to undergraduate, graduate, and professional programs. Um, apparently, the programs at San Francisco State, I'm using, using this as an example, the main goal is to help students to gain academic success. So all the curriculum is set up for primarily that purpose. So you will learn everything from, as I mentioned earlier, speaking, reading, writing, and listening, and, and communi communicating with people. 
And most of the uh, intensive English programs, similar to the one at San Francisco State, we, many of us, you know, provide our own TOEFL testing. And very often we can use our internal TOEFL testing to get you into the university's degree program, which is actually part of the conditional admission process I'm going to talk about later on. So um, one of the major features, you know, for the intensive English program is pretty much all the program will provide their student internal TOEFL testing and use that TOEFL test as a way to get into the university admission. Um, a lot of programs, depending upon which institution, which university you attend, many schools will use TOEFL or some other kind of a English test when you first arrive on campus and they will test your English capability to determine which class level you will go into when you start your intensive English courses. And that is no exception at San Francisco State. We use our TOEFL, internal TOEFL test as the, uh, the placements test on your first uh, arrival day. And then based on your test result, we would determine which level of English classes you will go into. And very, very often nowadays, okay, pretty much all the intensive English programs that I know of, okay, everybody will offer conditional admission. This is not really the case about maybe 10 years ago, but nowadays everybody understands a lot of the students, when they come to the US, their purpose is just not to learn English. Many of them, they had the goal of wanting to get into the university in degree program studies. So many university, pretty much now, every university, they will offer conditional admission. In order to uh, successfully gain conditional admission, a lot of the program, they will offer TOEFL waiver, which I will touch upon a little bit later. And one of the benefits of attending the university affiliated intensive English program is they usually have a different degree program application deadline. So if you just directly apply for the university, whether it's a community college or a four year institution, usually what you see on their website in terms of the admission deadline is usually the deadline. But for students who already come into the the university affiliated intensive English program, we can often extend that deadline way beyond the traditional application deadline. And that is the one true benefit in terms of studying in a, in a university or community college affiliated intensive English program. So this is the traditional intensive English program that students wanna go into, whether you just wanna come in here and take one semester or one summer or one winter sessions of uh, English courses for your professional development or personal growth, or you want to come into the program with the hope that in the future you want to get into the degree program. So this is the typical, very standard, typical type of uh, intensive English program you can come into. The next thing, I just want to show you this chart because every, depending upon which university you attend, every university has different type of scale when it comes to the English proficiency level. I'm just, again, I'm using this as an example. This is the English, you know, level that we offer at San Francisco State, our own American Language Institute. And I would say probably most university intensive English program have very similar, if not the same kind of uh, setup. So, um, bearing in mind, uh, the university affiliated intensive English program, normally when they recruit students, um, in most cases, they don't really recruit students who do not understand one word of English. Because, you know, um, if somebody comes into the program without understanding one word of English, that usually takes a very, very long time for the student to accomplish the, the English proficiency level to get into the university degree program. So in most cases, a lot of the universities that uh, intensive English program, they set a minimum level. And this is the reason why at San Francisco State, our lowest level is considered low intermediate. That means your English proficiency is not high, but you do understand some English. You, you have probably taken some English classes in the past, 
You just need a, a little bit more work. And then from, the, from that point on, go into the intermediate and then high intermediate or the so-called pre-advanced level. And then it will go into the advanced level. And in our program, we actually have two different kinds of advanced level. Advanced level one is you are quite ready for some credit courses, but you may need just a little bit touch up on your English proficiency. And then advanced level two is we will allow you to start taking the academic credit bearing classes. And of course, the highest level is that means when you reach the required English proficiency, we will transfer you directly into the, the university undergraduate degree program or the graduate, you know, undergraduate degree program. So this is the, the, uh, the basic setup, you know, at San Francisco State. Uh, my understanding is many university affiliated intensive English program have a very, very similar setup. And as you can see on this chart, you know, um, we offer TOEFL waiver, okay, at the three different levels. And TOEFL waiver is, is, a, is a way for you to gain university admission, you know, uh, it's an easy way to, to, go, to get that so that you don't have to retake the TOEFL outside, okay, or spend any money taking um, English proficiency, proficiency tests elsewhere. So this gives, gives you some idea in terms of the intensive English program, how uh, this type of program is set up in the United States. So the next slide, I want to talk about the conditional admission. Nowadays, a lot of the students, they like to mix the so-called just the intensive English program courses and conditional admission together. And the reason is very simple. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the students, they start, they want to come to the US, they want to get into the university, but they don't have the required English proficiency, okay? So in the past, before we offer, I would say probably 10, 12 years ago, before any university offered conditional admission at that time, if you do not have the total requirement, if you do not have the else um, English requirement, and you want to go into the university, the answer to you will be no. But nowadays, things are different. Everybody understand that, you know, even students who do not have the required English proficiency, they do want to come into your university for future degree program studies. And so it started about maybe 12, 15 years ago, okay? Some of the university decided that, you know, we want to take care of our students even then they do not have the required English proficiency. So a bunch of the universities start setting up this kind of program. So conditional admission is really for international students who are actually academically qualified. When I say academic, academically qualified, meaning that maybe you got a very good grade GPA from your high school, your secondary school, or your university. But because your lack of the proficiency of an English test score, you cannot get university admission. So conditional admission program happens under this kind of circumstances. Like I said, conditional admission, some in some countries, they call it a double admission, meaning that you will start with your English program first and then when you spend some time learning English, you improve your English proficiency level and reach the university admission requirement, then you can transfer into the degree program. This is a very easy way to get into American university studies. So you do not have to spend times and times, money and money in your country trying to get the TOEFL test done or get the ELSE test done in order to reach the university degree requirement. You can just come in into the uni university, start with your English courses, even you may have a low TOEFL score, you may have a low ELSE score, but you can come into the university and start in the language program first, then advance into the degree program. 
this is, is an opportunity for you to study at least one semester in the English program. And if you do well, you're able to complete all the recommend, recommended level of courses and, and actually achieve the, uh, uh, the good enough grade or score, okay? Then the following semester, you will go straight into the degree program. A lot of students may ask, you know, how do I apply for conditional admission? This actually varies from institution to institution. Some university, they will do your English and, and your university uh, admission together. But in most cases, a lot of the university, they will ask you to apply for the language program. But in the meantime, they will ask you to submit your high school transcript or university's transcript so that they can evaluate your academic record. If they determine that your academic record is up to standard, they will offer you a conditional admission letter so that you can use that to go to the US consulate or US embassy to apply for visa. And please do not worry about, you know, some students have always worry about, oh, well, if I have a language uh, program, I-20, if I have only a conditional admission letter, would I be able to get a visa? Actually, all the uh, overseas US consulate and embassy, they are fully aware of this type of program, okay? Because so many universities are offering this kind of program. They know this is an easy way to get into the university. So please do not worry about that. Now, one of the good things about the conditional admission is a lot of the intensive English program, of course, they set up the conditional admission for their own uh, degree, for, for their own university degree seeking students. But um, many intensive English program, they also set up partnership with other local institutions. For example, I'm using one example, of course, our our, intensive, our own intensive English program is primarily set up to feed students into San Francisco State. But we also have partnership with a local community college, okay? So from time to time, we have students, basically they're telling us, you know, once I reach the, uh, the, uh, the English proficiency, I would like to begin with a local community college because it's cheaper, it's more economical. Okay, so we do have partnership with local institution, whether it's community college or it's a foreign institution. Okay, but primarily if you apply for a university for conditional admission, your goal is to get into that particular university's degree program. Okay, so this is the, this is the, the general information about conditional admission. Next, I wanna talk about a few programs affiliated with the intensive English program. It depends on the, the universities. You know, some universities like to set up one type of a program and other institutions like to set up the other kind of program. So I'm just gonna give you some idea because on the market, whatever you talk to, you're gonna listen, you're gonna hear all these different terminology. The first one you're gonna hear is called pathway program. What is a pathway program? Pathway program, similar to conditional admission, okay, but it's, a, it's set up a little bit differently, okay? This program, once again, it's designed for international students who need to improve English. And in the meantime, they wanna take academic courses before officially university admission. And the kind of academic courses they take usually can transfer into regular university degree programs. Um, and this kind of program pathway, usually the way it's set up is like usually like the, like the first semester or the first couple terms, you would take English courses only. And then when you finish the English courses, then the next, the next stage or next phase you will, you will begin to take some academic credit bearing type of classes. So if you decide to go into this kind of program, whether it's set up by the university or the college, 
or the third party vendor, okay? That's more, usually that is the structure. You will still start with the English classes. And then once you finish all these classes, then you move into the second phase. Then you begin to take academic credit bearing classes. And normally at the end of the pathway program, student normally will be officially admitted into the regular degree program if you meet all the requirements. Once again, I mentioned earlier, pathway program can be run standalone, okay? Or many university, they run their own pathway program. I wanna mention this program because when you talk to, in, your, in the process of seeking a university for you to apply to, okay? You're gonna hear different terms. Some of the university will tell you that, oh, we offer this kind of program called pathway. You will come in and study intensive English classes first, and then on the second term or the second semester, we allow you to take some classes. That's the typical setup of a pathway program. Again, the goal is to get into the degree program, and then with the extra bonus of transferring some of the credits. All right, the next type of program I wanna talk about is called gateway program. Gateway program, for example, like in San Francisco State, we offer this kind of program. And what this, what this program does is we will allow you to take English and the university academic credit bearing classes together at the same semester. This kind of program is usually suitable for short term or if you wanna pursue a academic certificate or if you wanna go further, you want to you wanna look for a degree program, okay? So regardless of what your goal is, okay, this program gives you that flexibility and usually you can achieve the goal within a short amount of time. So the purpose of this program, again, is to improve your English proficiency and academic skills for university success. And I mentioned earlier, when we set up this kind of program, we usually allow students to take both English and academic credit bearing classes together simultaneously. So if, you're, if your timeline is only one semester and you don't wanna just take English classes only, unlike the pathway, pathway usually the first term or first semester, you have to take English classes only. But gateway program, we will give you the flexibility to take both English and university academic courses. And of course, you will receive, during this process, you will receive support, you will receive assistance, you know, from the advisor to help you understand and complete your university, university course requirement. Um, I mentioned that because it's a, it's a combination of both English and university classes, Okay, usually we will require students who have a little bit higher English proficiency, okay, to come into this program so that you can take advantage of this, 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 this great benefit, okay. So if your English is, is at a lower end, your English proficiency is not high, normally this option is probably not for you. But if your English, is, your English proficiency is pretty high, maybe not to the point of reaching directly, reaching the university admission requirement level, but it's considered very good, then you will be offered the opportunity to take university academic courses. So this is a different type of program. Now, I wanna mention another program, which will be great. This is particularly, um, a very good option for students who are currently studying in a high school, but they're ready to go into the university studies, okay? We call it the foundation program. Many of you probably already heard so many different terminologies on the market. You know, you may be familiar with the pathway, you may be familiar with the foundation, but you may not know what is the difference between pathway and foundation. And even for, for foundation program, a lot of people say, well, this is not the same kind of foundation program I hear from X university because Y university 
probably offer different kinds of foundation. So I want to bring this up to you. I mean, again, I'm using San Francisco State's foundation program as an example. The reason why we want to bring this up is because we know, due to the COVID-19, due to the economic situations, a lot of the students are very concerned about, wow, I have to spend this much money studying in the United States. And this is the reason why Vincent mentioned about community college as a very affordable way to begin your American academic career, American university studies. Same thing for foundation program too. And this is a very affordable way. And this program is designed for international high school students. Whether you are currently in your final year or you already graduate, you're just about ready to go into the university, you can start taking university classes even before you go into the university. Okay. Um, the San Francisco State Foundation program we will give you the opportunities to take academic credit bearing classes from the comfort your, of your home. You can take this online, strictly online. And all the classes you take will be true university academic credit courses. Now, there are two ways. The reason why we want, I want to bring this up is because we are two tracks. One is for students who has sufficient English level you can just directly take the university, California State University credit courses. Given that you reach the minimum requirements of IBT TOEFL 61 or L 6.0 or the ITP TOEFL 500. And the other one is if you are thinking about taking some English classes, this program is also good for you. Okay. We know that other universities have a similar kind of programs available. So we want to make sure that for those of you who are actually thinking about taking English courses, and but your English level is pretty high, you could actually consider this as a, your option, meaning that you can take Eng intensive English classes for one term, and then go straight into the foundation program, start taking university academic courses even before you are admitted into into California State University. Um, the good things about the courses of this for this program is all courses are carefully selected. So when you take the classes, you know you are taking classes meeting not only the, the university's um, general education requirement, they are also meeting the graduation requirement. Okay, so every single unit is you take will be counted toward your future undergraduate degree. In the case of San Francisco State, you know, and I would I would say it's the same thing for many other universities who have the similar type of a program. Okay. When you take these program, you finish all the classes, you will be automatically admitted into the undergraduate um, an admission, and then all the courses will be transferred into your university studies. So for students who finish the one full year academic program, normally they will get 24 units or eight classes. Okay. And that that which means that you can pretty much save one year of money. Because normally when you come to the United States, you have to spend four years, minimum of four years getting a degree. Now if you start this program one year overseas, then when you finally arrive in the US, you may only need to take three or maybe a little bit more than three years that you get your, your bachelor's degree. So this is another program. So I want to mention to you. Now, among all the programs that I talked about, whether it's just in the intensive English program, whether it's the conditional admission, whether it's the pathway or the foundation program, all these programs have one common feature. We call it the TOEFL waiver especially if you are applying to the same university after you finish the English program. And TOEFL waivers normally are wonderful way for you not to worry about taking the English proficiency test again, you know, or not to, not to take, not to spend money or time preparing for another English test. So 
Different institutions have different ways of operating TOEFL waiver. At the San Francisco State, we offer two kinds of waiver. One is you can just take the, the internal TOEFL, which is a paper test, usually known as the institutional TOEFL. If you finish that TOEFL, you achieve 500, you're done. No problem. The other waiver, which many university English programs very much, very often they will offer this the second type of waiver is you finish the highest level of English class and you get a good grade, then you're done. They can automatically transfer you into the undergraduate degree program or in some cases, the graduate degree program. Graduate admission is a little bit harder. Okay, in most cases, if the university intensive English program offer waiver, the waiver is usually only exclusively for undergraduate degree because it's an easier process to manage undergraduate admission. So bear that in mind when you choose an intensive English program at a university, ask them about the total waiver, which is usually very, very key element. Okay, so. And this is pretty much a standard feature of all the program that I mentioned earlier. Of course, regardless what program you apply and get into, you're always going to get student advising and assistance. So some students say, oh, I did, I did not get into the degree programs. Does that mean I'm going to get all the students, you know, advising and help that I need? Of course. Once you get into the program, they will be designated people, usually the, the advisor. They will do everything they can to help you, whether your question is about how to prepare your English courses or whether or the question is about how to apply for the university admission and what is the application process like. Do I get any kind of academic support? All these things, you will get uh, a lot of the resources and help and support from the university. And as Vinny, you know, this is early mentioned earlier, okay? When you get into the intensive English program, okay, very often that they, they will organize different kinds of activities or um, social events for you so that your study is your study in the program is not just about reading, 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 studying, studying, studying. Okay, we believe that your purpose of coming into the U United States, of course, your main purpose is to study because you, you are here for academic success. But in the meantime, we want to make sure you know your learning process is full of fun. Okay, and a lot of a good things. Okay, so we will do. The, all the universities will tell you the same thing. And all the universities will open their arms, welcome you, and, and make sure when you arrive on campus, you get all the support you need, okay? So regardless what program you're getting into, you're always going to get plenty of a student advising and assistance. Even you don't want it, they're going to organize a lot of workshops for you. So you will receive excellent support. Now, the next few slides, okay, I spend a lot of time talking about different kinds of programs, and I just want to spend the next probably five minutes to quickly talk about San Francisco State, okay? And, um, you know, I don't like to talk about rankings, but San Francisco State is one of the, the 23 California State Universities, okay? And uh, we're located in the uh, West Coast, in, actually in the city of San Francisco. Okay, it's a wonderful location. And this location sits on top of the Silicon Valley. Okay, so this is a very affluent area. So you can see the campus, is, what you're seeing on the screen right now is act, the actual campus. We're very, very close to the ocean, Pacific Ocean. Okay, we have actually two campuses, one in downtown, one in, uh, in, the, uh, in the residential area, which is the main campus. Okay. And a little bit background. This university is founded in 1899. We are one of the 23 California State University campuses. We currently have about actually 
a little bit less than 30,000, but roughly at 30,000 students. And out of the 30,000, we have 25,000 plus undergraduate students, and then roughly 4,000 graduate students. We currently offer 125 different bachelor's degree, and then 100, roughly 100 master's degree and a few doctor's program. And this university is run on the semester system, which means spring and fall. So we have two 16-week semesters, okay, 16 weeks each. And the calendar is usually fall from August to December, spring is January to May. Now, what I wanna show you here is, I'm not gonna go over all the, uh, the degrees, but you can see, and this is probably very similar to a lot of the American universities. When it comes to the top 10 most popular major, you can see business is always up there, engineering is always up there, computer science is always, always up there. So a lot of university has a very similar very similar chart, okay? Um, but what's so unique about San Francisco State is it's a very comprehensive university. We're, we're not just having business or engineering or computer science. We offer many other majors, you know. A lot of the majors are really, really super well known, like cinema, like uh, Becca, which is broadcasting electronic communication arts, you know, or communication studies, you know. So I don't have to go through all the detail. I just want to let you know this is a very comprehensive university, lots of majors. The only major we don't have is law or medicine, but in the U.S., law and medicine are usually not offered at the undergraduate level. They're only offered at the post-baccalaureate level, okay? So at the undergraduate level, you have to study pre-law or pre-med. Pre-med is usually known as biology. And this is the reason why you see biology is one of the most popular major. Pretty much standard to a lot of the institutions across the US, okay? So, um, all the information that I mentioned earlier, okay, including our intensive English program, which is, which is the, the kind of program we offer English for academic preparation, or you want to apply for conditional admission, you want to apply for foundation. We actually all have those kind of programs. This is the website I website, just want to show you. And I put down the website at the bottom. So if any one of you is interested, whether you want to apply for intensive English program plus conditional admission, or you think that, you know, I'm currently in high school, I would like to start taking San Francisco State University academic credit bearing classes because actually those classes will be recognized by the entire California State University system, all 23 campuses. And then you can also, if you get the credit and you say you wanna go somewhere else to study your undergraduate degree, very often you can transfer those degree as well. I mean, I'm sorry, you can transfer those academic credits as well. So when you get a academic course credit from a state university, especially California State University system, it's highly recognizable by other institutions in the US. Okay, so for any of, any one of you who are interested in any of the program, this is the website you can look into. All right, so I'm gonna leave probably about 10 minutes for any question and answer. And my name is, again, is Alexander Chang. It's, it's showing up on the screen. And then that's our QR code. If you did not, get the, uh, the website information, you can just, and you have a cell phone or anything, you can just scan the QR code. It would prompt you directly to that page. So I have 10 minutes for questions. Do any one of you have any questions? Thanks, Alice. I have some questions here from Education um, USA in Japan. Sure. And yeah, and let's keep your slide up just for a few more minutes or a okay. couple more minutes, and then we can bring it down. Um, but we want to make sure people get that QR code. Also, they'll be watching this on video, so sure. <laughs> they can see. Uh, here's a couple. One question I thought was interesting: um, Do IEP students live on campus housing? Yes, they can. Well, again, depends. I cannot speak for other universities. Okay. 
But I think if you attend a four-year university affiliated IEP program, most four-year university, they will have housing facilities available, whether you are a degree-seeking student or you are just an IEP uh, in terms of English program student. Um, in terms of English program students at our campus, they have the same benefits as regular degree-seeking students. They can apply for housing, no problem. Actually, we have a housing coordinator at the Intensive English program. And her job is basically to help students find campus housing. Yes. Okay. okay. And uh, we had another question here. Uh, can you come to the US only for an intensive English program or do you have to plan to continue on for a degree? And does this affect your visa? I think the answer is uh, depend, depends on your country. I think I, I mentioned that, you know, I mean, from from the universities, you know, IEP's uh, you know, point of view, we welcome any students, whether you, you, are, you wanna pursue just a, in terms of English courses or you wanna, you wanna add conditional admission you know, to your uh, English courses study, we welcome all everybody. But the thing is, the, the truth is that the reality is depending on, uh, on the country, some countries, if you just use a, a language program I-20 to apply for visa, it might create problems. I wanna mention one country, you know, maybe it's not so much anymore, but in the past, I would say five years ago, if you are a student from China, if you are a student from Vietnam, and you just wanna use, you just wanna apply for our intensive English program and use the program I-20 to apply for visa, very often you get rejected. But Things have changed um, quite differently. In a, I think quite drastically in the last five years. You know, so um, I think um, if this is a question from Education USA Japan, I would say in Japan, okay, students usually have no problem just use I twenty IEP I twenty to apply. For yeah, them. I think this one came from Facebook. So, oh, yeah. okay. So I I would say the uh, depending upon the, uh, the country where you come from. Some countries, you know, might be more difficult if you just want to use I-20 from a language program to apply for visa. I would say if your goal is to get into a degree program, um, I would encourage you to consider the possibility of applying for both IEP and conditional admission. And they can also talk to Education USA and the, yeah. who can have the Please connection with Please also check with your local Education USA your Education USA um, advisor or Education USA advising center would be your best to support, best resource, you know. So they will always know this, the, 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 the most updated information. Great. Uh, and there is a question here. Um, uh, considering what's happening with COVID-19, how are English classes being offered now? Um, I think this is basically, um, I can speak from not just the San Francisco State, I can speak from the entire California State University system. Um, for California State University system in spring 2021, everything is going to be offered online, virtual courses. Now, individual campuses, some, we already know that some California State University campuses, they decided to offer hybrid, okay? but very limited number. For the most part, our, you know, there's announcement from the California State University Chancellor's Office, the entire system, um, the entire uh, instruction, whether it's degree program or non-degree program, this is includes, you know, intensive English program. Everything for spring 2021 will be offered online, virtually. But I know some individual campuses, I think maybe in the case of two or three of them, they're actually applying for um, exception to offer some hybrid classes, but they're, even they offer in-person classes will be very, very limited number, maybe like one class or two classes, that's about it. For the most part, it's being offered virtually online. Okay. Um, another question, uh, do you have scholarships for IEP students? And I guess that's your institution or in general. Unfortunately, not for the intensive English program. And I actually doubt that how many intensive English programs at other institutions will be able to offer 
scholarship. However, if you are applying for uh, intensive English program in conjunction with other type of program, okay. One example I'm thinking about is our foundation program. If you are applying for IEP, intensive English program, and you also want to do the foundation program when you get into the university, the first semester, we're going to offer you scholarship. But again, that is a very institutional specific question. I cannot speak for other university, but in my knowledge, I'm not aware of any university of this affiliated intensive English program will offer student scholarship. But they possibly they may offer some tuition discount. For example, like a lot of universities already know that because spring is going to be offered online, okay? So they are actually offering a reduced price on the tuition. San Francisco State is doing that. I know several other institutions that are also doing that for for intensive English program. Yes. Great, and uh, I think there's a question that's specific to uh, San Francisco State University here. What GPA do I need to get into uh, F SFSU? Um, for regular undergraduate admission, um, because it, you you didn't mention that it's graduate or undergrad. Okay, so I'm go I'm going to mention both. For undergraduate, uh, the minimum GPA is 2.5 overall GPA. And for graduate program, the overall minimum GPA is 3.0. Okay. Yeah, some, some uh, majors, especially the impacted major, they may want to see a higher GPA, okay? But the minimum is 2.5. For example, like if you're applying for engineering or computer science, 2.5, basically you are not competitive. Yes, you are, you are eligible for the university as a mission purpose, but you will not be able to get into that major. Let's see. And let's see, uh, we've got time for a couple more questions. One is, so I guess on behalf of our higher educational institution representatives from different countries who might be watching or watching the video later, um, if they would like to set up a partnership with a school like yours or with another college to start an English program, what's the best way to do that? I think, uh, Vincent, I think uh, um, you were very kind. You actually offered that that information a little bit you know, um, in the previous session. So my answer would be, um, I think probably the best way to do is um, if you are a student, please contact your international office because the, the best way to for two institutions, especially one in the US, one foreign, okay? The best way for the two institutions to get connected together, okay, is through their international office. And your international office, you know, basically normally can tell you which partnership they have with what university. And if the university you want to work with, if, if, if the students mind, if you say, I want to apply for this university, I want to know whether our university, my university has connection with that university. If it's not, then, okay, so probably the best thing is to check, ask your international office to make an initial, initial contact with us. And another way of going through this is contact your Education USA Advising Center. Normally, they can introduce the two institutions. And, and if an international office wanted to get in touch with you, if they were interested in your programs, would they just email you? Is that yes. normally the process? Yes. Okay. I think I believe that, you know, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm not speaking on behalf of my uh, other people, but I know for a fact that many of my colleagues um, in the international office they have, often there's one person who will be in charge of partnership. So I think um, if, if you send an email, even it's a call, a cold call or cold email, okay, to the international office saying that, you know, this is, um, um, this is a Korean institution, you know, and I'm in, we are interested in establishing some kind of partnership with your institution, please let us know how. And normally that email will be forwarded to the, uh, the right person who's in charge. Yeah. In this case, for example, if somebody wants to work with San Francisco State, and I'm the person who's in charge, you know, and 
And normally the process is once, you know, the, the, the two universities, the international office, basically once they, they establish the contact, and normally we can tell them, for example, if they're interested in the business program, we can introduce them to our college of business. And that's how the, the relationships build up. Great. Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you very much, Alex, for- You're very uh, welcome. Nation. We always welcome you with, uh, to not just our region, but everywhere uh, for Education USA. And to our audience- I love Education USA. I love working with you, Education USA. Yes. You heard it from him, not from us. <laughs> Thank you very yes. much. Yeah. So <laughs> students, if you have any question, you need all the help, please contact your local Education USA advising center. Talk to your advisor over there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.